what are the chances that we're actually in the very kind of system that you're describing where the, the environment and the brain is being emulated and you're just replaying an experience when you were first did a podcast with Lex after, and now, you know, the person that originally launched this already did hundreds of podcasts with Lex. This is just the first time and you like this time because there's so much uncertainty. There's nerves, it could have gone any direction. Um, At the moment, we don't have the technical ability to create that an emulation. So we'd have in to be postulating emulation. that in the future, we have that ability and then they choose to evaluate this moment now no, to, but to simulate it. Don't you think we're, we could be in the, the simulation of that exact experience right now? We wouldn't be able to know? So one scenario would be this never really happened. This only happens uh, as a reconstruction later on. Yeah. <laughs> That's different than the scenario that this did happen the first time and now it's happening again as a reconstruction. That yes. second scenario is harder to put together because it requires this coincidence where between the two times we produce the ability to do it. Um, no, but don't you think replay of memories, uh, um, poor replay of memories is uh, something oh, sure, that- so that might be a possible thing in the future. You're saying it's harder than to conjure up things from scratch. It's certainly possible. So the main way I would think about it is in terms of the demand for simulation versus other kinds of things. So I've given this a lot of thought because you know I first wrote about this long ago when Bostrom first wrote his papers about simulation argument and I wrote about how to live in a simulation. Um, and uh, so the key issue is you know, the fraction of creatures in the universe that are really experiencing what you appear to be really experiencing relative to the fraction that are experiencing it in a simulation way, i.e. simulated. So then the key parameter is at any one moment in time, creatures at that time, many of them, most of them are presumably really experiencing what they're experiencing, but some fraction of them are experiencing some past time where that past time is being remembered via their simulation. So um, to figure out this ratio, what we need to think about is basically two functions. One is how fast in time does the number of creatures grow? <laughs> and then how fast in time does the interest in the past decline? Because <laughs> at any one time, yeah. people will be simulating different periods in the past with different emphasis I based on- I love the way you think so much. <laughs> That's exactly okay. right, yeah. So <laughs> if, if the first function grows slower than the yeah. second one declines, then in fact, your chances of being simulated are low. Yes. So the key question is how fast does interest in the past decline relative to the rate at which the population grows with time? Does this correlate to you? You earlier suggested that the interest in the future increases over time. Are those correlated interest in the future versus interest in the past? Like why do, why are we interested in the past? So, exactly. But the simple way to do it is, as you know, like Google Ngrams has a way to type in a word and see how interest in it client declines or rises over time, right? Yeah. yeah but you can just type in a year and get the answer for that. <laughs> If you type in a particular year like 1900 or 1950, you can see with Google Ngram how interest in that year increased up until that date and decreased after it. Yep. And you can see that interest in a date declines faster than does the population grow with time. That is brilliant. And so, that is so interesting. you have the answer. Wow. And that was your argument against, not against, to this particular aspect of the simulation, how much um, past simulation there will be. Replay so, of past right. memories. First of all, if we assume that like simulation of the past is a small fraction of all the creatures at that moment, yes, right? And then it's about how fast. Now, some people have argued plausibly that maybe most interest in the past falls with this fast function, but some unusual category of interest in the past won't fall that fat quickly, and then that eventually would dominate. So that's a other hypothesis. You oh, might. Some category. So that that very outlier specific kind of, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a really popular uh, kinds like, of memories, but like, like sex, think, probably sex. In a trillion years, there's some small research institute that tries to randomly select from all possible people in history or something yeah. to simulate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yep. the question is how big is this research institute and how big is the future in a trillion years, right? And that's that would be hard to say. But if we just look at the ordinary process by which people simulate recent 
here. So if you look at, you know, I think it's also true for movies and plays and video games, overwhelmingly they're interested in the recent past. There's very few video games where you play someone in the Roman Empire. Right. But even fewer where you play someone in the ancient Egyptian Empire. Yeah, just in different. It's just decline very quickly. But every time. once in a while, that's brought back. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, just if you look at the mass of entertainment, movies, and games, it's it's focusing on the present, recent, past. And maybe some, I mean, where does science fiction fit into this? Because um, it's sort of, uh, uh, <laughs> what is science fiction? I mean, it's a mix of the past and the present and some kind of manipulation of that right. to uh, make it more efficient for us to ask deep philosophical questions about uh, humanity. So the closest genre to science fiction is clearly fantasy. Fantasy yeah. and science fiction in many bookstores and even Netflix or whatever categories, they're just lumped together. Yeah. So clearly they have a similar function. So that the function of fantasy is more transparent than the function of science fiction. So use that as your guide. What's fantasy for? It's just to take away the constraints of the ordinary world and imagine stories with much fewer constraints. Right? That's what fantasy is. You, you're so much less constrained. What's the purpose to remove constraints? Is it to escape? from the harshness of the constraints of the real world, or is it to just remove constraints in order to explore some, some get a deeper understanding of our world? What, do you, what is it? I mean, why do people read fantasy? I'm not, a, I'm not a, a cheap fantasy reading kind of person. So I need to... Uh... One story that it sounds plausible to me is that there are sort of these deep story structures that we love and we want to realize, and then many details of the world get in their way. <laughs> Fantasy takes all those obstacles out of the way and lets you tell the, the essential hero story or the essential love story, whatever essential story you want to tell. Um, the, the reality and constraints are not in the way. And so science fiction can be thought of as like fantasy, except you're not willing to admit that it's not can't be true. So the future gives you the excuse of saying, well, it could happen. <laughs> and you, you accept some more reality constraints for the, for the illusion, at least, that it, maybe it could really happen. Maybe it could happen. And that, it stimulates the imagination. The imagination is something really interesting about human beings. And it seems also to be an important part of creating really special things is to be able to first imagine them. Uh, you, with you and Nick Bostrom, where do you land on the simulation and all the mathematical ways of thinking it and just the uh, thought experiment of it? Are we living in a simulation? Well, that was the just discussion we just had. That is, you should grant the possibility of being a simulation. You shouldn't be 100% confident that you're not. You should certainly grant a small probability. The question is, how large is that probability? Are you uh, saying we would be... I, I misunderstood because I thought our discussion was about replaying things that already happened. Right, but the whole question is, right now, is that what, what I am? <laughs> am I actually a replay from some distant future. But, but it doesn't necessarily need to be a replay. It could be a totally new, you could be, you don't have to be an NPC. Right, but, but clearly I'm in a certain era with a certain kind of world around me, right? So either this is a complete fantasy or it's a past of somebody else in the future. But no, it could be a complete fantasy though. It could like, be, right? But could, then you might, you know, then you have to talk about what's the frank fraction of complete fantasies, right? I would say it's easier to generate a fantasy than to replay a memory, right? Sure, oh, but if we just but look the at the fraction, entire history. The if important. we just look at the entire history sure. of everything, we sure. just say, sure, but most things are real, most things aren't fantasies, right? Therefore, the chance that my thing is real, right? So so the simulation argument works stronger about sort of the past. We say, ah, but there's more future people than there are today. Mm. So you being in the past of the future makes you special relative to them, which makes you more likely to be in a simulation, right? If we're just taking the full count and saying, in all creatures ever, what percentage are in simulations? Probably no more than 10%. So, so what's the good argument for that? That just, most things are real? Yeah. Because Bostrom was, says the other way, right? In a competitive world, in a world where people like have to work <laughs> and have to get things done, then they have a limited budget for leisure. And so, you know, leisure things are less common than work things, like real things, right? That that that's but, just oh, but if you look at the stretch of history in the universe. Doesn't the ratio uh, of leisure increase? I th isn't that where we? Isn't that the four? Right, but now we're looking at the fraction of leisure, which takes the form of something where the person doing the leisure doesn't realize it. Now there could be some fraction of that, yeah. but that's much smaller, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> clueless foragers. Or, or somebody is clueless in the process of supporting this this leisure, right? It might not be the person leisuring. Somebody, they're a supporting character or something, but still that's gotta be a pretty small fraction of leisure. 